this is the rear rack of the bike. Uh, you can see it's very large size. You can put some like a tail bag on there with no trouble at all. It's also got a tool kit which resides inside of here, which offers quite a few of the tools that you'll need. Uh, they're not the best quality, but they'll get the job done if you need to. The seat itself, um, it's boy, it takes uh, six bolts to remove it. It's not very easy, and you're not really going in there unless you're working on the wiring and the battery. The battery's underneath of there. On this side of the bike, you can see the muffler. Um, that's factory. I haven't touched that. One of my friends has a FMF pipe, which sounds really good, um, but that re does require rejetting the carburetor, so I'm not probably going to mess with that. I'm pretty satisfied with it. Um, the wire that you see sticking out there is for a heated jacket, which uh, I'm not using any longer, but was really helpful in March. The rear end um, got just a single disc brake. Um, and the, the tires, I have replaced my tires with uh, a Maxxis 6006. It's supposed to be 50-50 dirt and street. It looks like a full knobby, and it acts probably like a full knobby. This is my first dirt bike, so I'm not sure. But um, it does ride fairly well on the street. You can take it on the highway. It makes a lot of noise, moves around quite a bit. But um, they're, you know, I love the tire for taking it in the dirt. The uh, engine on the bike, you got a 650 single cylinder with a carburetor, which is unusual. You don't find that too much these days. But um, the carburetor works really well. It's actually smoother than the fuel injection bikes that I've ridden, so I have no complaints about that. Engine's only putting out about 36 horsepower. When you're on the highway, um, it'll top out about 90. It'll cruise about 75 without too much trouble. You do get some vibrations, which are really inherent in a single cylinder bike. But um, overall, it's actually a really good bike for commuting. Probably want to put some less aggressive tires on there, and uh, you'll be happy pulling down almost 50 miles to the gallon. Good riding position, comfortable ride. It's a good bike for commuting. I've been using it in the dirt quite a bit. Uh, we've got some local roads around here that are really more or less just soft, uh, soft dirt graded over, and the bike is really a lot of fun. Uh, you can travel anywhere, really, anywhere that's really a road. I wouldn't recommend it for something like uh, single track trails, but I've taken it through mud, through sand. Um, it's, you know, over rocks, and it, it really does it all. Uh, does a very good job of it. Let me show you some of the accessories I got for the bike. I got the, uh, the Kawasaki tank bag, which, um, it fits really well. It's made for this bike. It um, snugs in underneath the tank and then above the tank it, it uh, snug, snugs in there too and um, it's good fit because these bikes they have got kind of a weird uh, shape of the tank and when you move the handlebars in you got the fairing not every tank bag is probably going to fit on there too well it's good but um, if you're trying to look down to see the map pocket you're probably going to have a hard time doing that but overall it works really well that was about fifty dollars the other thing that I got was the Kawasaki tail bag. I bought this from a guy on KLR650.net, uh, used but barely used. I think I paid about $75 for it. Um, it offers a lot of storage room and it fits perfectly on the rack. Uh, it's got straps that you know go right to the luggage rack. It's got a couple pockets on each side. You can flip open the clamshell lid. It's got quite a lot of space inside there, also with a nylon strap to tie some stuff down. It's also expandable. By using this zipper here, you can make it much bigger. I can actually fit an entire aero stitch suit inside of it. Also fit tire tools and um, just miscellaneous stuff. It's a, it's a really good, uh, good product. I like that one quite a bit. Okay, so if you're looking to buy a 2008 KLR, wondering if it's the right bike for you, you might be interested in what I like and what I don't necessarily like about this bike. So I'll share that with you. Um, first, the, the good things about this bike. Uh, one, I think if you were looking for your first bike or maybe your only bike, I think it's an outstanding choice. It really does almost anything fairly well. It's good for commuting. It's good for touring on the highway. It's good for even doing the twisties. Um, I can really rail this bike uh, through some of the turns, just leaning it over. It depends on the tires that you've got. But it's good at most everything. You'll be able to take it on any road that you might encounter out there. Um, it's got a comfortable riding position, gets good gas mileage, very easy to work on. You can get the service manual, very reasonable. I got mine on eBay. Also got an extended warranty on eBay for about $340 for another four years of coverage, so that was good. So it's not a very expensive bike to, to own and you know to maintain. 
Um, it does well in the dirt, and if you want to explore the dirt, I think it's a really good choice for that. Um, very comfortable bike. Uh, really, it's just I've really enjoyed riding it. I got 3,500 miles on it now. The things that I don't like, really only two things. One is that it eats up tires pretty quickly. The stock tires only lasted eh, about 3,200 miles or so. Once I got to 3,000 miles, you really could see the wear, and it accelerated from there. Uh, I replaced the tires. I'm not sure how long these knobbies will last. Probably not really long, but prepare to spend some money on tires if you do pick up a KLR. But I, I think this is probably a feature with a lot of these dual sport bikes anyway. You're going to probably run into that. Um, the other feature, and this is becoming a, a big problem with the 08 KLRs, is its use of oil. And my bike is an oil burner. Um, I've probably put in maybe a quart now in the last, since the last oil change at 1,000 miles. Um, it really seems to burn oil when you're on the highway, 75 miles an hour, sustaining it. It will noticeably use oil. Um, guy I know on the internet did a uh, trip cross country, used 12 quarts of oil to get uh, out to California and back. So it is an oil burner. Um, I don't think that's acceptable on any new bike, even one that costs $5,000. But be prepared that you may have to deal with that issue. Kawasaki right now doesn't seem to have a fix for it. Um, so we'll wait and see what happens with that. Um, other than that, it's a really good bike, and I really recommend it. If you have any questions, please feel free to send a reply. Thanks for watching.